And I think that's uh, Uliana here with deputies attacking uh, some resistance in the castles. Anyway, um, there are other cartoons, uh, but I don't want, you know, I don't want to spend time on the cartoons, although they are fun. Can we put the third question? Uh, interactive question. Можна поставити, будь ласка, третє питання, останнє питання на uh, на 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 екран. Дякую. What is the most desired outcome for healthcare reform? Retaining of status quo, full free. You can guess it. Oh, this is land. It's healthcare now. Well, let's not code it right. It's okay? Yes, that's right, it's okay, except um, uh, the C question is strange. Okay, retaining of status quo, full free Western style market uh, in land, uh, and it's a healthcare reform. So let's interpret it in the same way we have interpreted. A, retaining of status quo, B, full f introduction. I know it's not coded right, I know. What am I supposed to do as a moderator? fix it to the best of my ability. So we're gonna record it as it goes, right? So A, status quo. B, aggressive, fast-paced reform. C, gradual reform. D, other. So the same question now on health reform is really about pace of the reform, okay? And once again, A, status quo. B, uh, as fast as possible. C, gradual. And D, other. Well, it's because you are in this cartoon, you're on a horse already. See, you, you're already at full speed. There's no point of slowing you down. All right, so the question to you is, um, what is it that you are doing? <laughs> and how is it going to affect Ed budget too, in particular? Um, well, the reform that we're proposing is, uh, uh, happens in two stages. At uh, January 1st in 2018, we're changing primary care. That's where family doctors are, where pediatricians are, and they will be paying for it in a different way at a capitation level, which means the doctors will be paid per patient that come to them, and they sign an electronic uh, declaration uh, that they will be working together. And what's uh, good for patients is that, first of all, they'll be free to choose whichever doctor they want. Right now, they're tied to their registration, place of registration. Secondly, uh, there'll be a competition now between doctors for their patients, because now they're going to want to attract patients to them, so they'll be providing better quality care as well as uh, uh, better conditions for the patients themselves. Um, and third, uh, there, uh, for the patients, there'll be financial guarantees, because there will be uh, the creation of a national health insurance, that will pay at first for the capitation levels on a family practice level. And then in uh, January 1, 2020, we move over into a health, national health insurance for uh, specialized care and hospitalization as well, which means if you get hospitalized or you go see a specialist, there will be a fee for the service provided at that level, and it would be paid directly to the hospital or to the doctor by the national health insurance. What does this mean? This is the Western style of uh, having medical care. Um, we're here at a financial forum, so I'm not gonna talk about what that means necessarily for patients. Let's talk about what it means for the econ economy of Ukraine and the financial market. I don't know if you know this, but for every single year of increased life expectancy, GDP grows by 4%. In our neighbors, like Poland, it took 25 years to increase life expectancy by seven years. That's about one year, one life uh, expectancy year for every three and a half years. So we're going to have a growth of our economy just by investing into the health of our people. Secondly, right now about 7.6% of our GDP is spent on health care, of which about 3.6% is spent by people out of their pockets. We want to lower that to less than 2%. That frees up 1.6% of more cash on hand for our uh, citizens, for the people who live in Ukraine to spend on something else. That's also a very positive thing. And then we're also opening up the market for a lot of healthcare services that were never available in Ukraine. 
Our private healthcare industry is very limited because there was never any government funding provided for it. Now, since the, there will be a national health insurance, the money will follow the patient no matter where the patient goes, whether they go to a public hospital or a private hospital. Therefore, we see that there'll be a growth in the private industry when it comes to healthcare provision, whether it's laboratory services, whether it's hospitals that will be opened up. We now have a very strong um, a program where we're helping physicians, family physicians, register uh, their own private practices so that they will then be in control of their own destiny instead of being um, subject to the whims of the head doctor at their local ambulatory center. And uh, we already have foreign investments. An American uh, hospital is, an American management company is opening a American hospital, which is um, a, a joint uh, hospital commission in the US uh, accredited. They're building a hospital in downtown Kyiv in the private industry. Um, I was at a financial forum yesterday and day before yesterday in uh, Switzerland. And the pharmaceutical industry is very interested in how we're expanding government procurement of medicines, whether it's through the reimbursement program I spoke about earlier, accessible medicines, or whether our international procurement, which right now we're doing through international organizations, our national procurement of medicines, we're expanding the number of medicines that we're buying because we have 40% uh, savings in prices, so we're able to buy more medicines and more of those medicines. Pharmaceutical companies are interested in coming into Ukraine and opening up uh, manufacturing plants because we have a highly skilled and relatively uh, lower wages compared to the European market uh, workforce. Uh, there's actually a, a pharmaceutical company in um, Switzerland named Asino, which has opened its manufacturing plant in Kyiv. They took over a um, uh, microchip plant that had been Ukroboron uh, Proms at one point. And now they've not only moved their manufacturing into Ukraine, they've moved all of their um, pharmacovigilance uh, um, into Ukraine, and they're expanding more and more. So not only do we have private industry coming in for private hospitals, laboratory services, diagnostic services, uh, we also have pharmaceutical companies opening up, hospitals opening up, but we also have a big lack of certain things in Ukraine because it never existed, public health. Most of Ukrainians don't know what that is. We don't have public health specialists uh, we need educated public health specialists to come into Ukraine. We're also changing the way our hospitals are managed. They will now be nonprofit corporations, and they'll have both a, an administrative manager, a CEO, as well as having a medical director. At this time, all we have is a head doctor. We don't have very many health management companies or professionals who know how to do it. There's a big market for health management. Come into Ukraine. We're ready to work with you. And I think that most people think of healthcare as a drain on the system rather than an investment. We have almost 850,000 healthcare workers in Ukraine. They're getting paid. They have wages. They then put the money back into the economy as well as paying taxes. Those healthcare workers are providing services for our workforce. Our workforce needs to stay healthy, needs to live longer so that we're more productive as a country. And if we can increase life expectancy and we can free up more disposable income for our families, we can give them financial guarantees so they won't be hoarding money under their mattresses in case somebody gets sick, but they'll have a national health insurance guaranteed by the government to provide for their care if they or their loved ones become ill. We'll see that this opens up massive e economic possibilities. That's one of the reasons why I'm fighting that castle in the cartoon because those people who don't want all of those things to happen in Ukraine are putting up the walls and trying to make it stop. Yes, there's a dis discussion about the type of health care reform that has to happen, but some people don't want any health care reform to happen because they want that first thing, status quo. Even six people here in the audience have said they want to keep the status quo. The status quo doesn't work. We live 11 years shorter than our neighbors. People are dying at age 50 of heart attacks because we don't have public health in place. And we're spending far too much of our budget on ineffective methods. Simple things that we've done. We've given, handed over procurement to international organizations. It saved 
on the uh, prices of the medicines that we, produ uh, that we purchase for procurement. And now we're creating our own uh, organization that will be doing the same type of procurement, but uh, a Ukrainian organization rather than farming it out to UNICEF, UNDP, or, or other uh, international organizations. Other things that are happening are creating an electronic healthcare system, e-health system. We're actually producing something similar to what happened with Prozoro, where we started with industry, IT, um, with the ministry itself, and with patient organizations who created a unified platform that will now be present throughout Ukraine. We're registering medical facilities, physicians, and then patients. We're creating an electronic medical record that will be portable and will be pretty hard to fake. We've already found massive savings when we created a registry of insulin-dependent diabetics. The regions used to report that there were 250,000 of them. And we, at the federal level, we gave 50% of the financing for insulin, and the regional uh, governments gave 50%. Well, once we went to an electronic registry where the doctors had to actually put in their name and the names of all their patients, patients couldn't be doubled into other doctors, they couldn't make up patients' names, we actually only have 170,000 patients. And just finding the difference between those two numbers has saved 500 million hryvnia a year in the purchasing of insulin. There's many things that we can do to make our, our system more efficient, again, because we want our people to be healthier, to have a very productive workforce that isn't staying at home, and isn't using its three or four months of sick leave that's put into the uh, code for them. We want them to have uh, financial guarantees and to have more disposable income and not be in fear of going bankrupt if they become sick. Most people don't think of healthcare reform as being something that's actually good for the economy. It is, and there's a lot of room for investment. So we invite those who want to invest. And I wanted to also um, say one thing uh, to what uh, Dmitra was saying. Um, when we talk about how we do healthcare reform, we need to look at two things. We need to look at those people who are the managers, who are the implementers, and we have to make sure that they do the things right. But we also need to look at those leaders, the ones that are making the choices and that we're doing the right thing. Because that's the only way that we'll really be able to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much.